Welcome to Graph State Variables in Katana. I'm Matt Barker and today I'm going to be showing you what Graph State Variables are in Katana and how we can utilize them in a lighting pipeline and workflow. Graph State Variables aren't actually about scripting or as such, although they can be used in scripts. As far as lighters are concerned, they're more part of the UI and node graph flow. One of the common uses for Graph State Variables is for switching shots with some relatively simple setup we can switch between shots in rendering we can change a setting and all animation cameras and lights can change as the graph switches over to another shot in a movie this even works smoothly while live rendering as you see here shot 2 shot 3 so I'm going to take you through setting up three different shots like this in my forest scene. I'm going to first demonstrate with the cameras for the scene. These are three separate Alembic files that I've exported from my scene uh, at different locations, focal lengths and whatnot. First, we need to make the graph state variable. Go to the project settings tab. Here's where you'll set the range for your scene, current time, and re overall resolution and stuff. But you'll see variables down here in graph state variables. We click on this and go add variable. Then press the config button on the right and go rename. We give this a name. So this is a variable. We won't call this shot1. One. Shot1 one will be the value that we put in this variable. This variable I'll just call shot. So now we need to insert the value for the variable into this shot parameter here. So if we go shot underscore 01, we now have a value called shot1 for the shot variable. I can then go backspace 2, enter, click in there again, backspace 3, enter. So now if you come up the top of your screen, you'll see we have a variable called shot if we click on the, the yellow writing. And we can change that between shot 1, shot 2 and shot 3, changing the value. Now what we need to do is link this variable to switches in the scene that can switch between the given values. So there's a special node for this called variable switch. This looks just like a merge node at first, but once we connect any number of connections to it, it gives us input fields in the parameter pane. Edit. If we expand patterns, you'll see we have three separate connections here. We need to first input the name of the variable that we're referencing, shot and then we need to insert the value which matches up with the connection that we have. So this is shot underscore 01. Copy paste. Two, three. So now when we switch between those it's going to switch them. So this is my original lights that we created, my test camera and my original shot one. So I'm just going to disconnect this one and connect in this one over here. So when you switch the variables, you'll see that the same camera is switching around positions. With the variable switch node, we can also rename the inputs as well if we wish and it will actually display it on the cables. So if we're handing this off to someone else to make or we're making a script, we may want to do this sort of detail. But otherwise it will work without the naming. So this is the point, the variable switch is the point in the graph where it will read upwards from the switch and choose the correct input. We need to rinse repeat this now with other things that we need for switching shots. For example, 
we could do a variable switch on three different characters which we could then switch out the alembic files to have different animation caches per shot or the example I'll show now is how we do it for lighting so I create my variable switch connected in line I'm gonna keep my base lighting because in here I've just got my overall sunlight and a dome light let's create another gaffer and then I'm gonna call this one shot 01 lighting and I'm gonna copy paste twice and connect them up so we can break out from most connections we can branch out multiple ways and now I'll just name them quickly I'll just pause it so I've just named those shot one two and three lighting and I can connect those in the same as we did the cameras to the variable switch I should have copied the last one I'll just pause the video and fill this out same as before so what we can now do with this setup now it's all named and connected same as the cameras we can start a render going start a live render and we can start lighting these shots so like in the previous lighting video we can show the incoming scene on these nodes which will allow us to make adjustments to the dome light and distance light as needed or just add lights per shot so if I wanted to add some sphere lights I can add them in and I've got a unique light just for shot one now I'm going to turn on sync selection in out so when I select it here it will highlight it over here and I'm going to go to my perspective camera to place it bring it over and I've now got that in the shot just put it uh, above my character somewhere okay my live render wasn't working there and I was about to fix it on the pause video but I realized I better show uh, the live render wasn't working so coming to the render settings I was still rendering from my test camera which has been disconnected so uh, then I got this error test camera not found in scene so it's important with the render settings to keep the current camera that you want connected in here so that was just my error I thought I'd show YouTube my mistake so restart that render with the backslash hotkey should start it off again yep here we go so now we'll we'll be able to switch our graph state variable up here and switch between the shots okay so looking at my shot I've got shot one with the red basic red saturated light uh, I've got a back rect light here uh, for shot two and for shot three which is mostly focused around the log area here I'm lighting with a yellow light around the log uh, and if I come back to the view here you'll see the live rendering is keeping up a variable switches are doing their work and I'm able to switch between all shots and see the differences with all of these going so this is not the minimum for uh, or the maximum rather for variable switch we can connect as many of these in as we want and these are just a few of the uses of variable switches uh, there's uh, many other uh, ways and, and reasons that you might use a variable switch but being able to uh, tinker and render with multiple shots uh, within one graph setting up your work especially if you're using uh, some of the incoming scene stuff where we can adopt a package for editing tweak it and have multiple shots so you can have very consistent lighting uh, one in some cases one artist can do the work of many lighting artists when using katana so it's a really powerful feature whether working on your own stuff or in big in big studios it's a real valuable feature there to get a lot of stuff done so thanks for joining me on this video on graph state variables in katana
I hope you're enjoying the series and I hope to see you on the next video which is collaboration in Katana with live groups.